Welcome to Abundant Acres Homestead. My name's Kenny, and today I'm going to show and talk about what I screwed up this week. Uh, beginning of last week, Angie asked me to uh, take care of the chickens. Asked me if I would, and I said, "Sure." You know, I'll get up in the morning, I'll go out and I'll water them, I'll feed them, check them all, make sure, make sure everybody's accounted for and present, and boogie on down the road to work. I'll show you. All the eggs. Well, if you pick the eggs up during the day, or when you go out and feed, you get um, a pretty clean egg. Like that. If you don't pick them up every day, you get a nasty, dirty egg. So today, I've got to hurry up. And get these things cleaned up for Angie realizes that uh, I kind of slacked on some of my duties. So here we go. Cold water. And obviously the eggs are still good because uh, we can leave them out for I think it's up to two weeks. And as long as you don't wash them, they're fine. You can clean them up, you can do whatever. And then you can put them away. A lot of times, what I'll do with them is I just rinse them off and I crack them open and eat them because they usually take about three or four eggs a day. Well, that's what made me think about was I got to the refrigerator this morning and I was like, I got eggs. I was like, oh crap, I've got to go get eggs. Also know too that some of these are cracked because it did get pretty cold. And when I picked them up out of there, I noticed that some of them had a, a crack in them. And I think they just basically got cold and they froze and they broke. If you wash them up like this and they float, you know they're bad. A bad egg will float, a good egg sinks. It's also good to know that too. I'll, uh, yeah, if she realizes that I didn't do that, that's all I'll tell her. I just wanted to check them all, make sure they were all still, yeah, they're good. It used to be we gave all of our bad eggs to the pigs. So, you know, if there was a bad one or a cracked one or whatever, you know, the pigs got it. And of course my granddaughter, even if they were broke or not, whenever she went to collect the eggs, um, she always gave the pigs an egg. Every one of them. I shouldn't say every one of them. Uh, each pig got their own egg. Another broken one. Oh, another broken one. Oh, that one really broke. That one no good at all. Another broken one. Hope I got some. Another broken one. Might be in deep trouble yet. Another broken one. Another broken one. Okay, I think she's gonna know. Another broken one. Good Lord, have mercy. That's the other thing. I'm gonna make sure I get the sink all cleaned up too before she gets home. Okay. Bucket number two. It is always nice to have fresh eggs on the homestead. Everybody always says, don't you get tired of eating eggs? I say, no, no. Angie made me a uh, uh, radish onion mix. It was kind of like what the pieces and parts of the radish and onions that were left over. So when she'd get done freezing or storing or whatever at the end of the harvest, and she chops that up and puts it in a bag for me. And I'll eat three or four eggs a day in the morning. I just put that, sprinkle that in there fry it up or nuke it up and 
I got fresh eggs in the morning. I also like to say the, uh, I know everybody says that their egg production does slow down. And you know, a lot of times it does. But I'm not really seeing it here. I mean, I think there was a couple of really cold days when it got down to nine degrees or something like that. We only got maybe two or three eggs. But I, Isa Browns, I'll tell you what, they are machines. They are egg laying machines. I don't know what else to say about that, except for they will pump out the eggs. Last time I did go into the uh, farm store and they had, uh, they were clearing sent out their birds again. And they had seven birds left and I don't know what they wanted. Dollar fifty a bird or something like that. I said, I'll give you 50 cents a bird. And the guy told me, he said, I'll give you, give us a dollar a bird. You, you gotta take them all though. I said, okay. But there was only seven. So I brought them home. 15 eggs. Shh, don't tell Angie. All right. Can anybody guess where the 15 broken eggs are going to go? I just hate wasting them because obviously, um, I mean, I know they're broke. And I know they're cracked and they're not good for human consumption. But they are good. And my dog loves them. And he's out back there for that reason is to protect the chickens. So we're gonna get this scrambled up and taken out to him, he'll love it. Obviously, all the eggshells and everything, compost pile. Figured the dog, dog keeps all them birds alive because our, uh, a lot of people think we're crazy because we got our chicken pen right on the woods but the reason why we can get away with that is because of the uh, German Shepherd we have right there so he keeps everything in and out nothing comes up there and messes with it we've even seen one time where a I, I, the dog kept going nuts and I couldn't figure it out every time I went out there I was just like what is going on and uh, I put my trail camera out there and he had, uh, there was a red fox that kept, you know, running around the opposite side of where he was trying to figure out how he could get in there. But he never would go in there because obviously the dog's sitting there, you know, giving him the lot four. So we've not, not lost a chicken back in the day when we had our chickens, because we had them over there one other time. And there was a huge pen with a great big um, chicken house. And we had picket fence around it. And I'll see if I can't find a photo, but I don't know if I'll be able to. And we had ducks over there. And we couldn't figure out, you know, something was getting in there and eating the chickens. And it was like they didn't really mess with the ducks. But, uh... There was always a chicken come up missing, especially during cold weather. And then uh, got the live trap out one day and put it out there and come to find out it was a possum. The possum would grab the chicken while it's alive and just crawl all the way up over it. I mean, I'm telling you what, we had a fence over there. Um, they were uh, concrete panels. That's what they were, 12 foot or 10 foot concrete panels and we made a 10 foot by 40 foot chicken run out of that and anyway as years progressed and life happens and stuff we got rid of all the chickens and everything and we moved them out and moved them over to a smaller place where they could be taken care of and obviously that chicken run just you know weeds galore weeds are everywhere 
So I brought home a couple of um, big Nubian. I think they were Nubians. I don't remember. They were big meat goats. That's what they were. And I put two of them in there. And I'm telling you what, within three days, there wasn't nothing left in there. Them goats cleared it all back out. And briars, or sticks, trees, anything that grew through it, it was gone. The best weed eater God ever invented, a goat. And everything else he did. So, yeah. And then once we had our chickens back over there, Angie, uh, we also had the burn barrel. And it was over there close to it. I'm going to say it was about 12 feet away. And we burned our paper trash in that. And some of, I think it was my father-in-law called her and said, hey, maybe you got a fire. And she goes, oh, yeah, 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 I know. I know there's a fire over there. Yeah, I just lit it. Yeah. So about 10 minutes later, he called back again and said, Angie, you better go over there and check. You've got a fire. Oh, I know. I know I do. I'll, I'll go over and look at it. So she went out the back door and looked at it. By that time, the chicken pen, the chicken house, the duck house, everything was on fire. And anyway, uh, she called the fire department. And by the time she called me, I flew home from work. And when I did, the... She already had it. I beat the fire department here. Rural America, it happens, you know. But uh, I beat the fire department out here, and she done had it out. But by that time, you know, she went out there, and all the chickens are all, the ducks are all trying to get out that fence, and they can't get out. But anyway, she went over and ripped the fence up out of the ground, let everything go, and not the first chicken or duck. Got harmed. Nothing. She saved every one of them. The only thing she couldn't save was the chicken house and the duck house. See, that's good. He doesn't like his eggs burnt, so he's told me that before. Okay. Whoa. Almost had 16. I just dry them off. I'll put them in the egg cartons. And then they're for our consumption. Or I take them to work and I sell them. Depends on what she's doing that week. Everybody knows that sometimes we have eggs for sale. Sometimes we don't. Depends on what she's making or using. So you better get them while you can. And no, before anybody asks, I do not color coordinate. Let's see one here. Rhode Island red, lots of brown. Whoa. Keep trying to work on that 16th broken one. Come on, butter. Skinny one. Still got five and a half dozen, so good shape. Uh, she gets home after a while, I'll tell her, I'll say, hey, uh, what are you gonna do with some of these eggs? You're getting a bunch of them in there. She'll either give me the chicken eye, or she'll say, ah, I'll take those to work. But anyway, this is Kenny from Abundant Eggers Homestead. Make sure you like and subscribe. Come back and see us.